So I took one trip to go to a um, United Nations event and talk about the environment. And that trip in an airplane was the same impact as 15,000 PET bottles, which is more than I will use in my whole life. So people are flying around to talk about saving the environment and doing more harm than they can ever do, than they can ever decrease by having the meeting. Yeah. And that's why, that's why life cycle analysis is important. People are doing things which are totally crazy and missing the things which could be really helping. And two years later, they look at the impact and say, hey, this law was a mistake. It increased plastic sales, plastic right. bag bans, increased plastic sales because you have to buy a thicker trash bag now. Yeah. And they increase harm. And then they say, oh, well, we made a mistake. So why would a politician be so stupid as to not do the homework, make a law, and then two years later look like an idiot because they have to take their own law back again? It, and also, if, uh, if I may, then, uh, it has happened in Sweden. Yeah. And the, the T-shirt bag was invented in Sweden mm -hmm. by a guy in by 1959, let's say 69 years ago. And the guy invented, uh, it was an engineer, Stan uh, Tulin. So this, this guy invented uh, the T-shirt bags, the plastic, just to, first of all, uh, to stop the forest devastation, yeah. which was the, taking place, uh, taking place in, over there at the time, and also as to be used as a second, second packaging, for example, for garbage packaging, is that right? Yeah. And so, it is not a, a just a, a, a one use, a single use packaging. And so, t-shirt bags is the only package which is not single use. You use it at least twice. Just a question for you, for example, what do you do with the t-shirt bags that you pick in the, in the supermarket? You take home and throw it this away. Yeah, they used to the garbage. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And so if, let's let's suppose that we're gonna ban, I mean, uh, t-shirt bags. You're gonna buy garbage bags. Yes, that right? uh, yeah. Which are five, five times thicker. And not paper. More plastic. Because it's impossible. Right? It's impossible. Yeah, it doesn't it's work. And not safe. Yeah. In you mentioned only, that in your book. That's right. That's right? right. In the only solution for garbage, uh, for garbage, it's, I mean, to, it's the plastic. Plastic. And so you're going to replace plastic by plastic, which is That's, thicker. Yeah. And so we're going to increase the, the, the plastic. So people say to me, oh, you're a plastics guy. Of course you're against plastic bag bans. It's like, no, if I, if I was fighting for the plastics industry, I would say, please ban the bags. We'll sell way more plastic. Right. That's yeah. the reality. Yeah. 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 It's hilarious. And as you said, plastic bags save 5 million trees a year. That's why the guy invented it in the first yeah. place. He's a Swedish guy. He's surrounded by trees. Right. All they've got is forest industry. He wanted to save the trees. And we've forgotten that now. We've forgotten that we... Why would you chop down 5 million trees just to increase harm and increase cost? Yeah. It took place, place here in Brazil. I mean, you remember that uh, the Atlantic forest we used to have in this area here? And so we have a plants of, uh, let's say, many... Uh, plants or uh, plantations, uh, tree plantations, to produce cellulose and paper. And so we destroy the, the rainforest that we used to have here to produce paper. Yeah. And then we replace it by plastic bags. And then we stop this devastation here. Many years ago, like uh, 70s, during the 70s. And so what has happened in Sweden has happened here in Brazil as well. All right. And uh, Evandro, uh, what role does PET uh, recycling play in Brazil's circular economy? And how does Val Group lead in this area? That's a, that's a good one. Uh, well, first of all, uh, PET recycling is crucial for the circular economy. And that's a fact. Uh, Val Group... Uh, was actually, as a matter of fact, we were the pioneers of recycling PET in Brazil many years ago. And we are still the key player in that market uh, with uh, three sites in Brazil, two sites in Europe, and one site in, in Mexico just for PET, bottle-to-bottle, -bottle, food-grade recycling. Um, so as Chris has said already uh, and have proven that with a lot of data, 
which I like, I like actually the statement that you have in your book that without data, you're just a person with an opinion. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, data shows that uh, PET is the most sustainable uh, material alternative for a lot of uh, uh, packaging material uh, uh, artists. So, so based on that, we in Val Group continue investing in mechanical recycling. Uh, all these plants that I've mentioned are for mechanical recycling, but we have also uh, ventured the chemical recycling. For to handle those materials that are more difficult to to use the stream of mechanical recycling. So yep, we do believe in PET recycling. We think that this is crucial for the circular economy, and from the standpoint of carbon emissions as well, uh, and should be part of any discussions uh, with brand owners, with end users on sustainability. One point I'd like to make is the public think that we need recycling to make plastics green. And life cycle analysis shows that plastic and PET bottles are the greenest solution even with no recycling. And that's a really important point. We're, we're not relying on recycling. We're not waiting for mechanical or chemical recycling to make the PET bottle green. It's already the greenest, easily compared to metal or glass. No question. Every single study agrees. But when you do mechanically recycle, you make it 70 or 80 percent greener than it already was. That means mm -hmm. reduce fossil fuel use, mm -hmm. reduce material use, reduce of... Uh, greenhouse gas and so on. So that's the story. And the more you do it, the greener it gets. So exactly. uh, yeah. that's an important point. Because the, the I think the customer thinks we're doing this recycling in order to make plastics green. And it's not true. It's already green, but we're making it even greener. Right. Which is great. Yeah, yeah. And one, one point that uh, comes to my attention is regarding bioplastics. And are often marketed, marketed for as a, a green alternative and you mentioned in your book that they are not so sustainable as they seem. Yeah. Yeah. And what are the hidden drawbacks of bioplastics that people should be aware of? Ooh, interesting. So um, if you look at the life cycle analysis, they're not greener than polyethylene or polypropylene or PET. So these, these things that sound green, because we can't use our feelings to decide what's green. It's a fact, right? These are numbers. These are proven numbers. And so unless it has a reduced impact, someone will try to sell it to you, but it won't be an improvement. And that's what we have. We have a lot of alternative, which are worse. There has never been found anything which is greener than the polymers that we're talking about. So um, there are some biopolymers that might make sense in the future. Let's say we ran out of fossil fuel. We can still make polyethylene. Brass Chem here in, in Brazil has polyethylene for many years on the market, available from plants, not from fossil from fuel. From sugar cane. Yeah, from sugar cane. And, and the public is unaware of that. And there are other companies making green uh, or bio-based um, polyethylene and bio-based uh, polypropylene. There's other companies working on bio-components for PET as well, where some of the monomers are coming from mm -hmm. plants. But um, it's kind of a distraction. Basically, the greenest at the moment is the same polymers we're using now. New polymers are worse for the environment. Um, and also, when we stick to these same polymers we mentioned, the recycling is much easier. Imagine you had 10 new polymers, and then you have to get them all together in a waste and identify sure. every one and separate it. <clears throat> It's much better to stick to two or three really green, low-impact, cheap polymers and use them for everything you can. Correct. Okay. And and this is uh, it's beautiful, but uh, it's not effective. Yes. Okay. I have friends working in these companies. I mean, they don't like me saying this, but it's a fact. <laughs> I'm a fact person. I don't care if they like me or not. I, <laughs> if the numbers say it, then I say it. Yeah. I ask you, uh, Chris, what steps can we take to enhance? Uh, plastic recycling and extend the life cycle of these materials uh, among the industry as okay. a whole. So in my book, I talk about designing for recycle because at the moment, a plastic bag contains the minimum amount of additives to use twice. Mm -hmm. And then, because it's about cost, nobody wants to pay more when you don't have to. You don't buy a Rolls Royce if you need a Fiat, right? It doesn't make sense. So these things are designed to be cheap and to be thrown away after two uses. If you're expecting to get this back again at your factory and recycle it, then you would put more stabilizer in it and better stabilizers than they're using now. So this, is, this needs to be a change with polymers that we have to design, we have to add a little bit, just a very small change in the additives so that when we get this product back again, it's still in good condition and can be recycled many times. So these very small amount of stabilizers makes a huge difference in how many times you can recycle and the quality of the recycled material. 
Looking at the Brazil, you have an additional additional comment to this, Evandro? No, I mean it's it's I, I fully agree with Chris when you say uh, design for recycling, right? Uh, like I've mentioned, this before. is very designed, then. Eh? Exactly. Could so, get... yeah. if you take PET, for instance, um, the 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 reduction, the light weighting that we have been seeing, uh, I've been 30 years in the PET industry, and I've seen a two liter bottle used to be for CSD like almost 60 grand when I started, and today we see two liter bottles for for CSD with 38 or even less. So this light weighting is, of course, um, in favor of recycling. We are sending less material, less waste that us usually goes to the landfills, right? And, uh, and we, when we recycle PET, uh, and some data shows as well that for each ton of recycled P resin of PET, you're going to be reducing by 53% the carbon emissions when you compare it with the virgin material. So, um, yes, uh, we have to pay attention on the, 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 the research and development of new products uh, with the end in mind, so recycling in mind. All right. And the, the final question, we are coming to the end of our episode. And talking about mega trends in this area and, and room for improvement, room for innovation, do you see a big space for that? There always is innovation, the customer doesn't always see it. So for example, there is a late, we talked about the importance of removing the label Correct. when you're recycling a bottle. It's usually made of a different polymer. You can't throw it in together, you have to separate them. There might be adhesive, which you have to remove. And now they have new bottles with no label. So you just put a marking on there with, and it's 100% PET, no need to remove the label. There's also new bottles with just a PET cap because this cap is made of polyethylene and you have to separate it yeah. because this is made of PET. If you make the cap from PET, now you can throw the whole thing in with no separation step. Oh, so there are innovations all the time happening in the polymer area that the customer is usually completely unaware of. You mentioned something, just one more question because the talk is interesting. You mentioned in your book uh, something interesting about the use less type of, less sort of uh, uh, plastics. Yes. Uh, limit to PE. PP and PET, right? Yes. The fewer you use, the better. Mm -hmm. There are plastics which are needed for space shuttles and uh, satellites and military applications. You can't make a... Engineering. I mean, uh, Engineering. Thing, things which uh, a bulletproof vest, for example, might be made of Kevlar. There are special needs for plastics. But in general, m many of the applications can be done using the standard plastics that we have today, which are green. One reason that they're green, too, is that we make them in big factories. When you make things on a very small scale, they're not green. It's much less efficient. And so these things already have been scaled up. Your company has large scale operations, which sounds to the customer like a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. The bigger it gets, the cheaper it gets, and the more efficient it gets for the environment as well. Yeah. Okay. So perfect. Any additional comment? Uh, comment? I don't think we covered uh, quite well the LCA discussion. I believe that uh, just one comment about the, uh, the retail business here, we have uh, Coming back to the legislation we have, uh, let's say, seen all over the, the place here in Brazil. So they are putting some uh, a strange, so to say, uh, legislation together in order to replace, as I said before, I say by uh, reusable uh, uh, bags instead of uh, free T-shirt bags. You understand what I say? Mm -hmm. So uh, if, you, if you do this one, we're gonna go to that point, and so we're gonna take it. Well, we're gonna take that that opportunity to you be used to use the t-shirt bag as garbage bag, and so we have to pay attention to it. And so this legislation that we have seen, even let's say replacing by, uh, say compostable, which is impossible uh, impossible here in Brazil, because we have very few plants, you know, to process these compostable products. It doesn't make any sense at all. And we have seen many, let's say, legislation popping up here in Brazil. And so we have to pay attention to it. We have to be very careful to it. Otherwise, I mean, we're gonna create some legislation that we have here in Brazil that doesn't work. You have seen many of them, many cities. And then we go there and talk to the council guys, talk to the, to the congress, uh, congressman, you know, to explain the LCA. And then when they get the information, then they say, okay, forget about it. Let's put this legislation on hold. 
because we are completely lost, because they pick just one part of the information about environmental protection, for example, just one part of it. It happens all over the place here. And then they believe that this is the truth. No, 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 this is the only one part of the, the story. And then we are telling the other side of the story, which is what is coming behind. Let's say, what did, when this product is coming from, from the birth to the death. And so when it, we tell this story to these guys, and so they say, okay, oh, let's pay attention. Let's stop a little bit and think a little bit more about it. And so this is something that we are trying to explain to people, say the whole picture, not one, one part of it. Work to be done step by step, step by many step. patients. It's the biggest challenge we have ahead of us. One, one more comment. They did a huge study where they looked at all these packaging and they found out that replacing plastic packaging increases harm 93% of the time. That's looking at all kinds of things, not just bags and straws, but chemical drums and all kinds of things. 93% of the time, replacing packaging with an alternative plastic packaging increases greenhouse gas and waste and harm. So it's just a terrible idea. If, if the customer is in the store and they don't know what to buy, the plastic one is usually the cheapest and greenest one, almost every time. Impressive. Apart from wood and wool, wood and wool are great. People ask me, what's greener than plastic? The answer is wood and wool. I bet you can't knit a computer, right? You can't sew a computer. That's a problem. So yeah. if you can make something out of wood or wool, then that's usually greener than even plastic. Our mobiles. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be heavy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thank you. All right. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to follow our group on social media to stay updated on the next episodes. See you then. Mm -hmm.